Hi everyone. If you've worked in project management or software development this year, you've probably come across the term Agile. More than 86% of all software development teams have used Agile in some way, shape or form. So we're going to go through Agile from start to finish completely to get you up to speed really, really quickly. Who am I? I'm David McLaughlin and I've taught more than 45,000 students in project management and in Agile from many countries around the world, receiving thousands of five-star reviews, and I've taught more than a million students to pass their PMP exams through my series on YouTube. Now, first of all, what is Agile? Agile is a method for delivering value, most often through a project. We're delivering a change and usually we're delivering it in incremental pieces so we can deliver value quickly. In 2001, a group of 17 individuals representing the most widely used lightweight software development methodologies at the time agreed on a common set of values and principles, and this became known as the Agile Manifesto. The Agile Manifesto says we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. And we're going to see how all of these things actually work in practice and how they interact with each other. The main idea with all of these is that we're seeing real things and working face to face and communicating quickly rather than using emails or documentation or doing showcases or reports. And that becomes a very powerful way to work. So while there's value in items on the right here, we value the items on the left more. And these are supported by the 12 clarifying principles which we'll show all the way at the end to tie everything together and really give you a great understanding of Agile. Now, we know that Agile came from many different uh, frameworks, as we saw coming together in 2001. But even before that, it came from the Toyota production system, or Lean, 60 years earlier. Kanban was also created at Toyota in 1953. And then many decades later, the new new product development game was the precursor to what we now know as Scrum. And Lean Thinking came out, which was a book that uh, that showed us the Toyota production system and the inner workings of Toyota and how they were able to create value at a lower cost. And then we had extreme programming, feature-driven development, and crystal dynamic systems development method, and a few other frameworks that came together as we saw in 2001 to create that manifesto. Now, what does a typical agile project look like? As we know, there are many different methods, there are many different tools, but there, are, there is a certain way that Agile can flow in most scenarios, and it looks like this. We start with our product backlog, we go through a few different ceremonies which we'll go into in detail, and then we demonstrate uh, a usable increment or a piece of value to the customer, we get their feedback, and then we reflect on the way that we're working and we improve our own way of working. All of this is done during a two-week iteration or sprint. Now, it can be more or it can be less. That's up to the team and it's up to your way of working. But typically, it's around two weeks and then we do all of this again. Now, what are the typical roles that we're going to see? Let's start there. First of all, we have our product owner. They represent the customer and they provide or they approve new features in the product backlog. It's a list of features that they want to deliver and they prioritize that list. So we have the highest value features always first and always the next one that we're going to be delivering. Then we have our Scrum Master. Now, this could be many different roles. It could be a project manager role. It could be a servant leader role. It could be just a manager in a team acting in the Scrum Master way. We know they're uh, acting in the Scrum Master way if they are a servant leader, growing the team and helping them remove blockers to them getting the work done. They also facilitate these ceremonies for the team usually. And they're a neutral third party. So they don't have a stake in the way that something turns out, but they are able to facilitate that problem solving with the team as a neutral third party. And the team are often developers creating software products, but they can be anyone 
performing or creating value or doing the work, if it's knowledge work or a research project or a design project, for example. So we start with that product backlog, which is our list of customer valued features that we're wanting to deliver. Each can be delivered in a few weeks to a few months with a preference to the shorter time scale. They're created or approved by the product owner and they're prioritized by the product owner. And usually it's just that product owner. They're not a committee, it's only one person. So they have the final say on all of these things. And usually they know the product really, really well. The team break down those features into smaller pieces and they put them into the sprint. So they have to be able to be completed within a sprint. Those user story cards, have acceptance criteria on them, which is the criteria that shows when that user story card is complete. For example, maybe it's a, a new button or maybe it's a different design on a web page, or maybe it's a, a, a new way of movement in a computer game. This might be the action or the usable thing that we can show to our customer. And they estimate those in user story points. And those user story points are decided by the team as well. The team selects the next highest priority user stories, enough to be completed in a sprint. The number of user stories is matched to their velocity, which is how much they've previously been able to complete. For example, if in the last three sprints or iterations we completed 25 user story points, then in the next iteration or sprint, we're going to allocate 25 user story points as well. This helps us keep a sustainable pace. And all of this is done during sprint planning or iteration planning, where we're planning the work for the next two weeks during our iteration. As the iteration progresses, we're going to hold our daily stand up every day around 15 minutes and usually standing up if we can to keep it nice and short, the team gathers around their Kanban board. The Kanban board has all of those user story cards on it and it shows how they're progressing. Maybe they start on the left in the backlog and they progress through development or testing or sign off or anything that you choose to have on your columns. So it could change depending on your work all the way into done as we complete them by the end of the sprint. During the daily standup, the team gives an update on their progress and they report on any blockers, anything blocking them from doing the work so that we can swarm around any problems and unblock them very, very quickly. During the iteration again, we're also going to do backlog refinement, which is where we come together and prepare enough user stories for the next sprint. So we're always preparing the work in advance as well at the same time. The three amigos come together and that is someone representing the customer. That could be our product owner, as we know, could be a senior user, or it could be an actual paying customer themselves. So the customer, uh, developers and testers, and they come together to break down those features into user stories. So we have a nice big feature. We break it down into smaller pieces that can be completed during an iteration. And they give them their acceptance criteria and they estimate how long they think it's going to take or how large or complex those user stories are going to be. And that looks like maybe this one might be a one, this one might be a three, this one might be a five. And it's usually relative to the, to the smallest one. So. Uh, this one is five times the size of this particular one, for example. We need enough of these user stories to be ready for the next iteration during our backlog refinement. Now, during our iteration, we've worked very hard and we've completed something that we can actually show to the customer. So we have a usable increment or a usable feature that we can showcase to the customer who gives their feedback and approves it, or maybe we need to do a little bit more work. All of this is done during the iteration review or the sprint review. We're reviewing the work or the things that we created. The customer themselves is reviewing the work or the, the usable increment that we created. Now, lastly, at the end of the iteration, we're going to review our way of working as a team. We'll reflect on our process and what we can do to improve. We'll come together as a team and say, what went well? What didn't go well or what should we improve? What did we learn and what still puzzles us? And then we'll take all of those things that we want to improve and make sure that they happen for the next iteration. So we're always continuously improving. 
Now, I told you at the beginning we'd go through the 12 clarifying principles because the signatories for the Agile Manifesto came back a few years later to clarify a few of these things. So let's go through these. This will tie everything together for you. And the first principle is our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Remember, we're trying to deliver software instead of documents, for example, and this is a great principle to start with. We welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. That means we're always open to change. Remember, in our sprint review or our iteration review, we're showing the increment to the customer and they might say, oh, hey, I, I think it was supposed to be a little bit different to this. Then we go back and we change it for the customer's competitive advantage. Number three, we deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. Remember again in our iteration, so we're trying to deliver something every two weeks or at least every few months. Number four, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Remember, we want to communicate face to face if we can. That way we're getting fast answers. It's not an email that we need that we take three days to get an answer on. We're actually getting answers very quickly because we're working together daily and getting those answers directly. Number five, build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and the support they need and trust them to get the job done. For example, if the product owner actually works in the area that they're getting the value for around that product, they're going to care deeply about that product and make sure that uh, they'll do everything to improve it. So that's what they mean, motivated individuals. Number six, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information is with face-to-face -face communication, which is what we were talking about before. And we do that in our daily stand-up or our daily scrum. So we're doing that 15 minutes every day, coming together as a team, hopefully in the same place, showing our progress and telling anyone of any blockers that's stopping us from doing the work. Number seven, working software is the primary measure of progress. Remember, we don't want reports or showcases. We actually want uh, working software, something usable that we have created, and we're going to show that to our customers so we can get their feedback. Agile processes promote sustainable development. Number eight, the sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. And we saw that where we're matching our work to our velocity. So remember, we had 25 user story points previously that we've delivered every sprint or iteration, and we're going to allocate 25 user story points for the next one because we know that's how much we've been able to complete. It's a sustainable pace. That also means that we're not hurrying up and waiting, hurrying up and waiting. And it also means that people aren't getting stressed and taking sick leave. And then we've got that big dip. So it's a very powerful technique. Number nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances quality. That means we're keeping things simple and we're also refactoring the code, simplifying the code base on a regular basis. And that helps improve quality. It makes it easy to work on and easy to understand. Which brings us to number 10, simplicity, which is the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. So if we have 100 things on our product, but if we wanted to simplify that and make it just 20 things or even just one thing, then all of a sudden it's way easier to use, way easier to code, way easier to improve. All of this is essential and we find that it's actually more powerful to work in a simple way than it is with lots of complex moving parts. Number 11, we're nearly there. The best architectures, requirements and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. That means, remember our retrospective, we come together and we say, hey, is our way of working actually working? If it's not, let's take some actions and we'll put that back into our process and we'll improve every iteration and every sprint through our retrospective, which also brings us to number 12. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective 
and then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. And that sounds exactly like that retrospective process that we described. Those are our 12 clarifying principles, a wonderful way to round out Agile. And now you have a wonderful understanding of Agile from start to finish through its history and through its daily workings. I hope you take this and create something amazing in your own teams, in your own organization. I truly believe that using this process, you too can create something great. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.